Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Selic the Thunder podcast. We're on episode 105. Numbers are we're getting old. But genuinely, it's my birthday on Monday. Mm-hmm. Who was the last number 105 to play for Celtic? Who was the last number 105 <laughs> to play for Celtic? No one. Take, take the number. Somebody take the number. Can Some. you, take more than, you can't take more than two numbers, can you? Uh, speak into that, son. I was talking to you. I was looking at you. I was giving, you, giving him some eye contact. I don't you know, know what. Mean? See, because these. Right, so. We were amazed before the podcast started, right? I shoved on these headphones and they're new, I think. The quality is unbelievable through them. I feel like I'm in a recording booth, but the difference is night and tea when you turn there. Like, you were inaudible, basically. Mm. Like, I think it picks up perfectly. See, that like is a bad thing, to be honest. Well, aye. Mm. Anyway, hello, episode 105 of the Selic the Thunder. Uh, We're glad to be back here in the G4 Claims studio uh we've got quite a lot to catch up on this week despite it being quite a quiet day in relation to celtic news we've got a few things to talk about we've obviously got your questions we've got the quizzes we've got the whole shebang so strap yourselves in for the next hour or so i'm actually going to remove my outer layer because it's quite warm and on that note i'll start with you mcginley since you've already chipped in how Mm. are you doing how's your week been how's how's things things are all right yeah um didn't enjoy my First experience of Tynecastle on Sunday afternoon. Oh, you were there, that's right. Yeah, um, I was there and then I was at Hamden on Monday talking to Neil Lennon, Graeme Soonis, Stuart Lovell and Alan Stubbs. Oh, yeah, so, don't even know that. Yeah, I know, I keep myself busy. Keep what was Lenny like? He's fine, yeah, he yeah. was absolutely fine. Um, I feel like it's mellowed a wee bit with Lennon, which is quite Aye. good. Um, I think that's what time does, mm. but he was answering every question, so yeah, he, he was brand new. Every, all four of them are brand new, um, you know, but if people don't that but all four of them actually were all right to deal with so yeah would you welcome him back to Celtic Park anytime soon Kieran well, let's not get <laughs> ridiculous here but I feel like you're the one that's uh, still leading the challenge in the Lenny Hate Brigade but I mean I've been to say Hate Brigade <laughs> I, I think uh, it's just I don't know I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty person. indifferent you know? Aye. how are you doing anyway over the left hand side I bad I mean same, same issues last time the uni work is piling up uh, by, by the minute, and it's it's a frightening prospect. We've got like probably just over a month until dissertations due. Two essays. Mm-hmm. I'll bring it on. So this is the first time we've done this podcast um, at this time of year where I've not been on an academic stretch. So I actually send my wishes out to everybody listening right now because I know we have a lot of people similar ages to us that listen. I send my best to you. Good luck, and don't fail. It's as simple as that. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm going to turn how it over. How, how are doing? you doing? No, it's always how are you doing for me and never how are you doing back. Um, no, I'm fine, aye. Um, life's how charging. How's ICW you? Good, good. Um, I'm enjoying my first couple of shows and obviously we're getting closer to my big trip to Philly, so life's yeah. exciting. Life's good. Outside that, pretty shit, pretty miserable. No, I'm joking. But, um, Have nah. you done a show since you've hosted your first? Aye, aye. Uh, I think with the last episode... You're uh, you, you, were, yeah, you, were, right? you were on the last one, it was us three mm-hmm. uh, But we've done a show at the weekend there obviously on Sunday um, And we've got another one a week on Sunday at the garage So I might see you there if you're interested in wrestling Buy your ticket, great guys, gabash Thank you Anyway, we should probably talk about Selic Thank you for asking though Ryan, I'm chuffed I'm chuffed you've asked me how am I doing That's nice, nice Sometimes you. I like to turn the tables Yes, when you think all the questions have been asked Celtic lost at the weekend though boys and we haven't addressed that yet. A massive opportunity. Celtic could have went top of the league following Rangers' defeat to Motherwell on Saturday afternoon. However, we lost. And I don't want to dwell on it too long because, you know, time moves. 
and Celtic like need to move. And there's no point of thinking in the past. We've got to think about moving forward. But Ryan, just how gutted were you come full time at Tynecastle on Sunday? I think towards full time, I had accepted defeat because I knew the way the game was going. Unfortunately, um, don't want to go into any conspiracy theories or anything like that. You just knew from about the 50th minute onwards, once that second goal was scored from, um, by Lauren Shankland, that the game was over as mm-hmm. a result. Just the 10 men v 11 men. He started so well, and then it all just went to pot so, so quickly. It's it's amazing the, the sort of domino effect that a missed penalty can have on the on the whole of the game, um, because it's three minutes between the missed penalty and then Yang's yellow card that gets upgraded to a red card, thanks to VAR, but... It was just a, a disappointing, another disappointing day at the office, and I've been saying that a lot on the Celtic Waves podcast. A bad day at the office, disappointing day at the office. I'd like to see more good days at the office, and yeah, as much as I was disappointed that Celtic went down to ten men, I was also disappointed with the fact that they didn't get on the score sheet and make a make a real fist of it. I know they had chances. I know the statistics probably look towards. I Celtic win if it was eleven v eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, I was getting a wee bit of stick on Twitter for saying that, but you know that's what all the statistics were saying anyway. So, yeah, a, a very very disappointing day. But you know the VAR turned its ugly head once again. Didn't it? Yeah, I, th- I think it's even more frustrating, Kieran, isn't it? After I mean, we were at the game together, obviously the, the Wednesday prior, where Celtic demolished Dundee seven one, and it felt like a real. Statement performance, and the, you know, we kind of left with a, a sort of hope thinking, right, if we can produce more like that, then this is on. But then suddenly you go to Tyne Castle, and, and, and that hope kind of fades right before your eyes. So, so what was what was your thoughts? I've not actually spoke to you that much about, about the game mm-hmm. on Sunday. I mean, obviously, as McGinley said, it was, it was a disappointing result because obviously, what happened the day prior, it was a huge opportunity for us to sort of to go top, but. It's just, it's infuriating because, as McKinley said, we started well. You've seen the signs that maybe it wasn't going to say we are going to go on and win like 7-1 if we, we had 11 men on the park, but we were playing well. The signs were there that we could have went on to win that game. And then something like the red card incident it happens. Missing the penalty, obviously, before that, it's... I mean, is that us back to not having a penalty taker at Celtic? <laughs> we'll never but, be able to trust a penalty taker again. But just incidents like that and... Their penalty, the handball, there's, a, a, there's been a lot of discourse about it on Twitter this week. Obviously, a lot of people, there's been a lot of conspiracy things peddled, and I'm not going to go as far down that route as some people might, but it's the, the decisions are shocking. The people that are in charge of making the decisions are very incompetent at what they do. There's no consistency whatsoever. And John Beaton must have turned up to Ten Castle pretty rough after sinking pints in that Indian restaurant. <laughs> Aye, that, well, well uh, that's, uh, we've seen him. Yeah? yeah, we've seen him. Throwing them back. Throwing them back, I would say. Um, but, nah, it, it, yeah, it's so annoying because I would have loved to have seen the alternate version of the game where Adam Eda converts the penalty because ultimately he scores that, Yang doesn't get sent off and it becomes a very dis- d- different prospect. But, you know, that old saying, if ifs and buts were... Right. Candy and nuts. There's, we can't really dwell on it in that way. Um, there's, there's no, there's no much of a point. But I think Ryan, you touched on a very key part for me. The disappointment kind of fell with the fact that we didn't make a right good go of it in the second half. A game where it's we a had must a win. Massive chance with Kyogo. Kyogo's got to score that goal in the second yeah. half, and then maybe the game changes. You know, you throw the cat in, in amongst the pigeons with that goal, and and something might happen. They might push on. For me. I just thought the, the subs again were baffling. Why are you only making two subs in a game where you've only got ten men? You've got players on the pitch that could come on and feasibly make a difference. You've got Oden home that could have changed the midfield. You've got Lewis Palmer that could maybe score from distance. Palmer didn't something. come on too late, didn't he? No. Did he even come on? In fact, he came on very, very late. Uh, I think only it, Ke- uh, he yeah, came on yeah, late. It was only Kelly and uh, Lewis Palmer that came on right mm-hmm. at the end, which was really disappointing. Um... It was Bernardo that was sacrificed as well, which I thought was quite odd. Um, but yeah, very, very disappointed, especially with the with the result 24 hours prior. Everybody was buzzing about that result, it seemed. I was like, we need to keep it calm. You know, it's, it's Tyne Castle. Tyne Castle's a difficult result. Then Celtic know what they need to go and do now, and they didn't do that. And yes, there's no damage done. There's no, uh, there's no like, ground gained or lost whatsoever, but... It's a real missed opportunity and you wonder how many more of them there's going to be 
out with the Celtic Rangers games from now until the end of the season. Because um, I, I don't trust a Celtic team to not drop point, more mm-hmm. points. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's an interesting one, I would say. I, I, I don't know, right? Kian, I'll come to you here. Do you think there's... How different do you think this is to other losses? Do you think that this is one... That, what's your standpoint? Because I think that we've all, to an extent this year, and, and some more than others, obviously, I'm known as being the Rodgers fan of the show, you could say, right? But is this maybe one where there is a bit more sympathies towards him for the fact that we did go down to 10 men and it is time cast or do you still look at it as, as badly as the other losses? Uh, well I think it has obviously helped as you said because if we went at 11 men and got beat the way we did I think there would be a lot more questions raised about the bottle of the team and that I feel like a lot of people were more sympathetic in terms of we've seen how we were hampered by pretty poor decisions on the park and then I mean that's not the excuse to you still had the rest of the game to try and make amends there was opportunities as McGinley said Font of Kyogo, who's not exactly a man full of confidence right now, so he's it's not the ideal person you want in the positions. But it it, it feels like a missed opportunity. But I do think Rogers, especially, is I don't know if he was maybe playing to the crowds a wee bit as well, just to try and further cement the fact that because I mean it, it did come out and I mean he's he's not going to get himself banned, and we're going to go and talk mm-hmm. about that. I'd imagine, yep. but this was tightening up the quotes there, <laughs> but like. I, I, he obviously has played it up in which you're going to do if you get beat at Tyne Castle but I mean he was right to say what he said because it's no good enough and then obviously we'll talk about the discourse on Twitter the Rangers fans seemingly with the, the shortest memories in the world talking about no got a right to shout about referees mm. after what happened at Celtic Park in end of December yep. but I don't know, we, we move on to the next game. That's it, isn't it? It's about now trying to... For, I, I mean, I know it's the cup next for for Celtic, but we, we do need to fight back now, Ryan, don't we? And, and we will get on to talking about the Livingston game in particular um, towards the end of the show today, but we really do need some, some statement performances now between here and Rangers because I feel like that there's this notion at the minute that... Rangers are the favourites for this derby game and, and and you could probably say rightfully because they've been the better side but at the end of the day Brendan Rodgers has got the better of them twice this season he can do it a third time but I think we need more evidence of that between now and that April 7th fixture Listen, either team regardless of what team wins the league this season it won't be won by playing good football that's for sure mm. both sides are of a very poor standard this season this will be the literally worst champions in the history of the country I think whoever yeah, wins the league this year there. I've said that for months now I think this has got to be one of the worst it's just a slugfest from now until the yeah. end it's now you know the way that the battleground is now set between the two sides those two games first at Ibrox and then at Celtic Park but all the other games as well Every game is just as important. I know that I know there's more importance on those games because you know it's a potential swing either way. Mm-hmm. But the way that Celtic are dropping points and now Rangers have dropped points as well. You know, Motherwell that shows that they're not invincible, invincible. or or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's it's a messy, messy title race at the moment, and it's messy because Celtic have allowed it to be messy. Mm-hmm. This would have been a concession if they went and did their job and were were competent on the park and competent off the park in their management. But there's standards that have been slip, slipping for a few months now, and that's the reason why Celtic are not even, you know, just in front. They're now two points behind. Celtic have won both games against Rangers this season and yet find themselves two points behind. Like, make that make sense. That's because of their incompetence um, in the smaller matches. Or not smaller matches, but, you know, the... The games lesser again. games. Yeah, the lesser game. Even then, you've got to treat every oh, they game are as... they lesser games, aren't they? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the reason why Celtic have dropped points. Yeah. Because they've had that out, out probably. Here's a question. I'll come to you, Kieran. Before we get into Rogers' ban and such, how confident are you that we can do this without a certain individual, that being Callum McGregor? Because we know we're going to be missing him for a while. And do you think that his absence at the weekend had an impact on the side? I mean, I think it definitely did have an impact. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that McGregor has been Celtic yeah. star player this season. There's been a lot of... A lot of times this season the conversation's been had about whether or not he is someone that would have been droppable for the team, but when you get to this end of the season, he's the most experienced head, I mean, out with James Forrest, but we're talking about starting, <laughs> starting 11 here. We'll pretend he doesn't exist. Uh, like, it's basically what Celtic have done for the, for the sake years. of this very argument, <laughs> is the most experienced head we've got in terms of the, the run-in for a title race here. He knows what it takes. 
obviously he'll be able to convey that message to the players like in training and things like that. But it's just it's not the ideal situation to have your captain out for. I mean, how long is he? Well, the original forecast of the transfer uh, of the injury is that it's till after the international break. But and I'm not buying into anything. There's rumours it could be a lot longer. So that that's not the most encouraging news. Mm. I feel like they would have came out and said if it was only like for definite, no that long, but it, it's it's far from the ideal situation and you just need to hope that players can step up in their place. You know there's quality midfielders in that team. You just need them to properly come onto a game and take ownership when it comes to the, the last few games this season. And I think the ones that's going to be the, the, the biggest miss is probably playing against Rangers because even if he's went into a game knowing the best of form, he always gets himself up for it in previous seasons. He knows what it takes against them especially, but as we're talking about, it's fine margins here. It's not even coming down to the games against Rangers. It's going to come down to whether or not we can manage to no drop points because the amount of times this season is that, what, eight, eight, eight fixtures now? Yep. We've dropped points. Quite a lot. <laughs> not one to Rangers. Nope. I, I it's hard to believe that, isn't it? Because I was banging the drum about how we had to be perfect for now to the end of the season. Obviously, Rangers let us off with one at the weekend. Oh, I suppose we let them off with one, but... It can be seen for both ways, because even if you think about it, going into that weekend, and you've seen Tynecastle coming up, I reckon a lot of fans of you said things will be the same at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. They'd have took it. Yep. But it's obviously no ideal to lose, but I'm sure we'll, we'll head on to the, the cup game and talk about how important that is as well. Yeah, huge. Oh, talking about huge, before we get into Roger's comments, there is some breaking news. That's which why I'm is, typing, guys. That's, not being he's, rude, he's not being ignorant. He's got his... I've, He's bit on the side what? to to tweet. Um, no, in seriousness though, the the big news that uh, Charlotte FC have confirmed the signing of Liela Bada from Celtic in the last ten or so minutes. They put a statement on the club website. Twenty two year old winger joins CLTFC Charlotte Football Club following a prof prolific spell in the Scottish top flight Charlotte North Carolina Charlotte FC today can, uh, can announced the club has acquired forward Leal Abada from Celtic FC as a young designated player Abada has signed a contract through 2026 with an option for 2027 and will occupy an international it's roster like two slot years. yeah two year so they have paid apparently 8 million that could rise to 11 million for a two year contract pretty insane you ask me we knew this was coming and we are going to come on to it in the second half of today's show so we will come back to it but the news has broke that Lee Labada has left the club um, so we'll revisit that very very shortly guys um, Brendan Rodgers was very honest in his assessment of the Hearts game Kieran um, and now faces a potential ban some of Rodgers comments from the weekend I'll go over a couple of them um, he said that my feeling is that the game was decided by the officials on the field and outside of the field you guys in the media will know me long enough to know that I don't really comment on officials they make mistakes and whatever else but today that felt like really really poor officiating he then goes into detail about the sending off uh, talks about that a little bit and then this is where he name drops John Beaton, saying for John Beaton to actually look at that in VER, supposedly under no pressure, and say that was a sending off, I find that incredible. Then he talks about the penalty, uh, goes on a little bit, that a little, a little bit uh, ended off with, but it was a poor day for the officials, I try to respect decisions and give the benefit of the doubt, but when I see that level of incompetence, which is the only word I can use, that makes me worry for the game. Now, the rules of the game is that if you imply any sort of incompetence on the referees, you find yourself banned, which is the case, Kieran, because on March 28th, we'll find out if he's going to miss two games. Your thoughts? I mean, obviously, the thing that everyone has picked up on when it comes to this is the fact that why is the hearing when it is? I mean, things get fast-tracked all the time. I mean, is, have, you heard the, have you heard the rebuttal to this, though? What is it? They've, they've never this 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 thing that's been paid, and this is me. I'm, I say this my video today. I don't mean to sound like an SFA apologist. They never fast track the manager ones. They never have. They never will. If it was a manager at Cowden Beef, if it was a manager at Brendan Rodgers. It was the rule is that it's always been the same time frame for clubs, so that they have time to put a case together, and that's why it's so late and why it won't be fast tracked. So apparently if you go back and look, and I'm not going to say it for definite because I've not done my research on it, but if you go back and look, there's never been a case where a manager's been fast-tracked. But yeah, it looks like he might miss a derby. <laughs> I suppose, I mean, 
I take it that's in the stands as well, but I feel yeah, like, yeah. Aye, that's proper Neil Lennon and the, <laughs> the, the director's just, box vibes. I've just got this vibe of I remember Arsene Wenger when he's standing like that. <laughs> Where do I go? Where do I go? That'll be Incredible. Rogers. Um, At least we'll have an away ticket. Rogers has got to, one. It's to take mm. the emotion out of each case. Apparently, is the reason why. Yeah. It's that long. So it, it, apparently, it's it's to ensure fairness to the club involved. Because if they f- made it too soon, then they wouldn't be able to put together a case to say why they shouldn't be banned. I would show them a video of Craig Levine after the, <laughs> after the Dundee United Rangers game, mm-hmm. and he only got a fine for that. Yeah. So, so but, but generally, in, in in regards to Rogers being banned, I I I'm for I for one aren't overly concerned. Like, I don't think a touchline ban is the end of the world, but I feel like that. The fact that you're not allowed to criticise referees, Kieran, is where my problem lies. Because you should be, if they put out that bad a performance, like, why should you be held to this almost, like, gun-to-your-head sort of scenario where you can't speak ill of a referee? Even if they've... If you don't... Put, put it this way, Kieran, you work in a law firm, right? And I know you're, like, a... What is it? What, technically, you're a, a what? A, is it a secretary? Like, what is yeah, it? Just say administrator. Administrator, right? If you done your job terribly, right? And your boss came out, or somebody, or somebody from like one of these partnering companies came out and said the emails she have been sending have been terrible. Like that should be allowed, just like Brendan Rogers should be allowed to say that they've done their job badly. I mean, I like the anecdote, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's my thinking. Like, why is he not? Why are you not allowed to criticise the ref? I suppose for the if you look at it for the SFA standpoint, they're thinking the refs get enough abuse for well, they're fucking fans useless. And such, but like. <laughs> It, it, why are they untouchable? Why do they, Why is there no consequence? I mean, obviously you, you get the odd time where they'll get demoted to maybe the championship for a week or that, but I feel like it, they would never do that. See, especially after our managers came out and lambasted mm-hmm. so, like, one of their referees, they're never then going to they're going to back them to the hilt instead of actually taking action against them. But I mean, this it's no limited to Celtic. There are a lot of people that. Seem to be thinking our oh, Celtic are like so. Every team goes on about the rest week in week out, and there's a reason for it because they're absolutely terrible at their jobs up here. And it's it's no coincidence that some of this is happening week in week out because when you put people incompetent in charge of things like VR and they get the chance to make the right calls, or it it, it gives them that like people like, when VR was getting spoke about for the first time, a lot of people are seeing it as a, a force for good. Maybe obviously there's a lot of push back as well but the, once you've seen the way it's implemented up here in Scotland you see other leagues have m- not quite streamlined it but it's getting there in a lot of other leagues that have had it for a number of years ever since it's introduction up here it's just been an absolute shit show yep terrible Ryan uh, another fine example of, of the weekend at uh, the weekend mm-hmm. yeah. and now Rogers pays the price yeah um, I think he could have chose his words a bit better Nah, I think he should have been. I think he should have been fucking harsh. I think he's, and it's not the first time I've said this in the past couple of weeks. He should have used these words better with certain things. Oh, um, are you one of this? Are you one of this woke mob? Then is that I'm what you are? Woke, then are you he's, in he's this got woke to, mob. I'm just gonna try and bring. Oh, what if your baldy idol Pep Guardiola said that? Oh, I bet you'd be lapping that up. What he was slagging journalists like last week. Aye, and I bet you were clapping. I laughed. I thought. Aye, funny. oh, so you laugh when it's Pep, but because it's Rogers. Aye, okay, we'll see where you fucking stand then. <laughs> but no, I, no I, I think you should be harsher. I, do, I think you should be allowed. I don't, it's pish. If I was a manager, I'd be fucking suspended every week. Because the referees up, the referees up here are terrible. Oh, I, they're terrible. not great at all. They're not, not great. No. That's fucking, that's generous. That's I'm shocking. Trying, I'm trying, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to be as diplomatic are. as I can. Yes, they're not good. They're not good. John Beaton shouldn't be out in the fucking Green Gates Cafe in Glasgow. Yeah, I personally was a guy name drop. Don't want to put off any potential clientele. Lovely career, man. Uh, he should be throwing them back. He should be in his. He should be researching the rules of the fucking game on his Friday nights. That's what he should be doing. Saturday night. Saturday night. Sorry, Saturday night. Thinking about John Beaton's, he's actually officiating this weekend, like on the park. Yes. As well, I think it's Kamal McAberdeen that he's. Ah, and he's going to have it out for fucking. Well, actually, can't. There's nothing. That, uh, well, yeah, I was going to say there's nothing they can do in that game that 
harm Celtic really, but like he'll have it out for somebody. Mm. Ah, but no, I think he. I don't think he should have chose his words carefully. I think. Do you not think that he's got to play the game? I think. I, he I know exactly what the consequences of his words were going to be even before he said them. Do you not think there becomes? And this is. I wouldn't hold any Celtic. This isn't me saying this because Rogers. If it was Postecoglou, if it was Lenny, if it was anybody else, I'd be saying the same thing. Do you not think there's a point when uh, week after week of poor decisions, you just can't help but use the word incompetence because it is incompetence. Like surely there's just a breaking point as a human being. I get that, but he should have taken a deep breath, ah, and then no, but he, he's, he's got to be smarter than that. I, he is a smart I, I get guy. what you're saying. I get what he's, you're saying. he's a smart guy, and it's a couple of times that I think his words have let him down. Um, you you know he, he might have opinions on things and that, and he might say things in certain ways, but he's got to take a deep breath and got to see the circ- the the consequences of what he says as well. I, I agree with what he was saying about the about the referees in particular, but. There's a way of conveying that, and when you actually name the person as well, I think that was mm-hmm. a big problem, wasn't it? Yep. Actually, name dropped them, like making it a personification of the actual incompetence rather than a general statement. I wonder if he would have been charged regardless for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not as if he said it and he was angry or anything. When when I was standing in front of him um, at the, the press conference, he was quite calm in what he was. It was almost measured as if what he was saying as if he'd rehearsed it before he, he came out and said it but um, I just think he could have chose better words if I'm honest I, I agree with him but he's got to convey it in a diff- different way for me I hope he just scants a ref soon just on the touchline you Christian Gamboa style <laughs> The urban myth. <laughs> um, right, before we get on to the half time segment, is there anything you want to throw out about the ban, about hearts, about anything? Or are we ready to go to yeah. that half timer? I don't know. I feel like I've said my piece about what's happening. Talking about peace, how's peace? Peace is, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, bye. Is it good? It's, good? Uh, I don't know. Looking at it, like at McGinley, it's, it's a re- not a restaurant, like a lunch place in town. Mm. There's a few of them. There's one in Finnison, one Waterloo Street, one on uh, Argyle Street, is it? It's not no far Mil- so Miller Street, the one yeah. I've English Actually, Street, yeah, yeah. but it's a sandwich show. It is overpriced. It's, it's very overpriced. But was it like seven fifty for a piece? I, I was seven pound for the Cubano one, and that oh. had uh, sliced ham. Oh. Uh, I'd actually need oh. to get the photo. Again. Pulled pork was on it. Sliced ham, pulled pork, uh, gherkins, mustard, mustard garlic mayo, oh and my. I feel like I'm missing an ingredient. But for oh. actually, I felt like I was floating after I ate it. I'm like, I'd, I'd pay six ninety five for that privilege. We've just get. By the way, no sponsorship. By the way, I was. No, I was wondering. I mean, if it, it, purely off our own. Yeah, back. Can if they want. I mean, <laughs> fact, I'd, I'd take a. What's that? A black card you get in Nando's now? Uh, uh, oh, aye. Aye, 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 I want to want. I want one of the New York deli sandwiches badly. Like yeah, I, I need to get it. Mm, I need to get it turn so and then get one. See, Seen the heart scheme when I was doing my player ratings because I do player ratings for the website. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sort of instantly after the match, um, so that's a bit difficult because they can change. Just aye, like, aye, aye. I actually wrote Yang looks dangerous in the first ten minutes, yeah. and then he studied somebody. <laughs> I was like, you know, that still actually works. Aye, 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 um, it still works. Aye. It did look dangerous. Nearly beheaded the man. Is that a hot take that I think that is a red card? Do you do, do you generally mm-hmm. think it's a red? Yeah. It's never a red. All the Sanyas. I know. I know oh, they're not. I know they're, I, know they're, I know they're different. But it's not a red in a month for Sundays, right? It's but it never. clearly is because he gets sent off. Oh, but but he should they be sent off? That's the whole point. The referee's been fucking incompetent, isn't it? I think it's a red. It's never a red. How can it be I a red? He's silly. It's I not he's, like he's got. The, I think the, he's the, naive. The boy, he doesn't the need boy to do it. jumps into his fucking boot. How is it a red? You are at the wind him. up, you. He I, but he's gone for the ball. He's got every intention of playing for the ball, and I get it. Right, that intention is not. No, right. But the bo- the boy's face is nowhere near it when he's gone for the ball. He has come flying into Yang's boot. It's not a red card. It's a yellow. It's a booking. Absolutely. It's never a red. Never. It'd be different if Yang ran towards the boy. Put his foot in the air and hit him with a fucking sweet chin music. Now that would be a red card. But he's not done that. The boys came to him. Can't wait for somebody to go back and find a, a clip of you who is somebody getting sent <laughs> off against us. <laughs> <laughs> so, Listen, I, I, I'd be gutted for any team if they got a red card oh, for that. So it's one of these situations where he's obviously not meant it in the moment, but it's getting the referee a, a decision like, to the make. S- the still oh. images look terrible. I think it. When but you we slow it, then that everything looks. Aye, worse. but you, you've got to, that's these. Th- this is the thing, and this is how it was worded. Well, I think it was on Sky 
on the ref watch or something, the word that it really be. It's like slowed down footage of that slash a still image takes away the entire context of what happens. Did that guy on Sky Sports News know say it was a red card? But like, it pre- might not pre- have been ref watch then. It was no, on it something. Was like, I don't mean, no, but people were slagging him rotten because they went back and found a clip of him saying that one earlier on in the season. Oh, well, maybe then. Maybe. So I, like, I just, it was on something somebody wanted to do. consistency in your pundits anymore? Aye, aye. I don't know. They make it up as they go, like the fucking refs do. If you if you've got it out of your system, he's ready for the half time. Aye, quiz. let's go to the half time quiz before I end up fucking scrapping with this cunt. <laughs> right, so we've got a here we go, tenable here. Hey, tenable. Uh, so we're back to the there's no any graphics or that for the screen it's just on the notes this week he said he's oh, it's fine the boy's his busy. apologies he's got a fucking job uh, tonight's tenable is simple the last 10 different opposition teams we have defeated in the Scottish Cup final oh in the final mm-hmm. so the oh. last 10 teams will be in the final okay. right okay right so just as usual I take it we're just working together on this one yeah. right so Rangers yes Motherwell yes Denfern one Yes. Aberdeen. Yes. Hearts. Yes. We're on five. We're fully through this, but this is, Kieran did say this, you'll fly through this it gets, at the start. This gets difficult, yeah. Uh, Inverness. Yes. Obviously. Good answer, good answer. Six. I'm trying to think of all the... So we're on six out of ten, and, and I feel like we've crossed off everybody in our lifetime. You have not? No. Mm. You're missing one in between a... Couple. Mm. Livingston? No. That was like <sighs> Um You've took a one of your lives away. So I'll, t- I'll go through the ones. Right, okay. I go, I'll, I'll just, I'll, right, so you've got Inverness. Right. Obviously, just think of when these were. Uh-huh. Heats, yep. I'm not going to give you the years. Aye, 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 aye. Uh, Inverness. You've got Hearts. Uh-huh. You've got Aberdeen. Right. you got Mullowell. Uh-huh. You've got Dunfermline. And yep. you've got Rangers. So how many left? Four left. Right. Cool. And are they all. B- like, or before? Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> there's one, no pure recent, but more recent than Same the rest. Recently. In, in our lifetimes. In our lifetimes. Because I don't remember us playing Hibs in a Scottish Cup final. I mm. don't remember us playing... Who's the other well, big I one? I might have one. Going to go. I can't lose another life, though. I'm not 100%. How many lives are we getting here? Two. Aye. Oh, God. I can't remember us playing Dundee United in a Scottish Cup final. I can't remember us playing a few teams, but we, we might have. It, they might fall into this bracket because I don't know how far this goes back. This could go back to the 90s for what I know. Goes back for now. Oh, right, okay, Dundee United. Yes. Right, they had and to one. When did we beat them in the final? Think about it. When did we beat them in the final? They're there and they're always there. God bless Oh, everyone. so we did, that's right. Aye, so, so aye, that would have been 1988, aye. So wow, you've got one. I'll get. I'll, I'll give you for this. This a help. There's two more recent than that, and one. Way oh, oh that. one before that. Mm-hmm. Both. Way before. Right. So shoot. <laughs> now this could be a risky one. I do not want to lose a life. But if we're going back to the eighties here, surely there's been a final we've beat Hibs. Well, we have beat Hibs, so that is a correct answer. But you don't even need to go as far back as the eighties. 2013. So we did. So we did. That's right. God. So at least Hibs is there. Right, so we've got two mere to get. Ryan, right, I've carried us here, son. Where have you been? <laughs> right, so you've I'm got, just, you've got all the ones. The inner lifetime. Well, I think. I don't know uh, when McGinley was born. 97. <laughs> I in our lifetime. <laughs> right. So there's two mere teams. We've got one mere life. Come yeah, you're on the mere difficult oh. ones. Oh, Kilmarnock, maybe. Like, we could be a shout. Kilmarnock, maybe. I feel like if you're looking at realistic teams, Kelly have got to be up there. Yeah. And then who else would be up there? Kelly. Your dream was League Cup, wasn't it? Oh. Uh, I think so. So how you don't? Aye. Kelly. Do I say Kelly? I'm trying to think, think of other teams. Falkirk or that? Oh. Mm. No, because I feel like Falkirk would have been a you know, I feel like they'd be like a, a two th- cup in the mid two thousands. Same, you know, same, Scott same. Arfield. I don't feel like they'd be eighties or anything like that. There's somebody before Dundee United, and that's the one that I'm like, right? Who do you want me to give you the years for these? Right, okay, go might on. help because right, he's struggling right, a bit. Okay, 1995. 95. That must be. That must be the goal. One, surely, that must be. Uh, if you want to guess it, guess it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, oh nice, I want to nice. give you the help for that one. Nice. 
got the right. goal scorer on that. Now, for the last one, mm-hmm. that this is going to throw it right up in the air because 1927. Oh, right. Oh, I, oh. I was going to say third round. So was I. Why did you say, why'd you say yeah, third round? Third round. And you'd be wrong. Ah, it's worth a go. I'm Damn. afraid East Fife. East mm. Fife. Wow. Wow. So we got nine. So that that was the most recent ten. Right. That's incredible, that. Uh, and we've got a few honourable mentions of the ones that came before the last ten teams. You had right. uh, Dundee, Clyde, Hamilton in a replay in 1911, St Mirren in Queen's Park. No ah. th- so no further on the Qatar. Nah. I just guessed for Blarnock because when you think of old teams, they're uh, one of the first that come to your head. It's like in the Scottish Cup uh, when you're ever at Hamden. And it's playing all oh, the, the videos. You are the winners. Aye, aye. There's like a period where it's like Ford Lanark, Ford Lanark, Ford Lanark. <laughs> Queen's Park with the team, maybe. <laughs> Queen's mm. Park won what, like the first fucking six or something, I think. They were in a they good had, few. I think they were in that the English game. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Nuts. So we've done well. Nine. Nine and the one we didn't get was East Fife. So I'd say that's a pretty good effort. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you. Um, we'll be back for the full time quiz, so don't go anywhere if you're listening in on Spotify, if you're watching on the old YouTube. Um, Leah Labada has left. We got breaking news in the past 20 minutes, half an hour, that Leah Labada has left. Uh, we've been anticipating this all week. The deal is a reported one of £8 million, but with fees that could rise to £11 million um, following his, uh, let's just say, complicated situation at Celtic Kieran taking everything aside uh, politically and and everything else for a moment what's your initial reaction to a bad leaving I mean it was seemed inev- it was inevitable at this point it was going to happen I'll try and stick to it because it's a very hot potato issue mm. with the, the issues surrounding it a lot of people try to paint things in a different light on Twitter that are not the reality talking about the situation and the fans' support for Leo Labada over the past six months or so, but in his time here, I feel like it was a player that stepped up in big moments in Angie's tenure, came up with some big goals, especially against Rangers. He came in at, what, 18 years old initially, but so it's a tough one because he's a player that could have been so much more, and I think at the time as well, he was always a player that Start, especially in the first season, there was a lot of he was a bit divisive in terms of uh, not as much as Palmer, but like mm-hmm. that way he's got the goal contributions. But there was a lot of like he's not really pulling his weight in certain games and yeah. things like that. But I mean, he, he scored some important goals for us, but it's, it's really disappointing the way things have turned out this season, especially with the refusing to play for the club and things like that. And his head not being in the right place and things like this, but. I mean, good luck to him, I suppose, but it's just, it's, it is annoying because you're losing a player mid-season. Obviously, external circumstances have happened here, mm-hmm. but it, but I know it's stick, stick away from it, but see the, the whole thing that Rangers fans... Oh, I was going to ask are, about the narrative, like, don't worry, it was going to come like up. <laughs> the, the narrative that's been pushed that he's been hounded uh, by yeah, Celtic. Uh, ridiculous, it's, man. It's just ridiculous, and it's based on zero truth whatsoever because... You seen the the raucous reception he got when oh, he, he got sucked everybody on cheered upon him on the return. park, man. And this is the support f- behind him. Yeah, like, and I'm not. Gonna, I said we spoke about this in my stream last night. And I tried to go about it as kind of no. I don't even use the word delicately because I wouldn't say I went around it delicately, but I tried to go around it as respectfully as I possibly could. I understand that there has been the odd one or two people out there who have decided to personally send him some abuse, and I understand that maybe there's been stories of one or two altercations in the street that haven't been so pleasant. Let that be a rem- let this be a reminder, though, at this moment. That does not reflect a full support. That does not... Re- just like any situation that, you know, if a, if a fan gets... In, I don't want to get too deep on things here, right, but if somebody gets, um, you know, a, a doing in the street, doesn't reflect the whole of a support, doesn't reflect the whole of a Celtic fans, doesn't res- reflect the whole of a Rangers fans. That's one person's individual actions. I think in general, the Celtic fans were very excited to see Abada back. They showed that when he returned to the park. They gave him the support to play to the play for the club. Leal Abada in return decided to play 10-pin bowling while we were playing against Motherwell. So we were trying to pull in the one direction. He didn't want to pull in that direction. And I think that now we've, we've simply went 
the best way for each party. It's as simple as that. I thought you were going to call him the Zane of, of Celtic there in the <laughs> One Direction. <laughs> no, I'm no. not that um, culturally, culture, culture, cult. I'm not that clued up on culture, right? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, I, I, I'd also like to add to that that he was the only player that was walking up the tunnel. Um, yeah. And the rest of the support. I know there, I know there's circumstances. Look, that as well. ultimately, the whole situation is bigger than what we'll ever understand. Really, it's bigger than football, but. There was no point, and all three of us can testify for this, being say, season ticket holders. I never once went to that ground and seen one person, not one person, boo him on the park or anything along those lines. No, me neither. But there seems to be this narrative that's been pushed online by opposition supporters because Celtic fans have a political al- allegiance to one side that must mean that we fucking hate Abada. Not the case. Never been the case. No. Simple. It's a narrative that's going to get run with, and they're going to convince themselves that is that it is the truth. And I mean, we can know that that just simply wasn't the case, but it's not going to stop them. No, nah. so. it won't. It won't at all. Um, wow, I just seen the score in that game. God. Yeah. 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 Seen that coming. Yeah, it's just a Thursday night for us. <laughs> yeah, I got used to this a couple of years I ago. I hope this ages like milk. Uh, you know, aye, it's, aye. it's about uh, 10 well, minutes still, in, so you know where. Still uh, 100 and fucking whatever minutes to go across both games, could lads. Be, <laughs> it could be the best thing for Celtic's title race if they go far. Oh, listen, we're not talking about it. Let's fucking move on. On that note, though, Ryan, I've not asked you about the bad stuff yet, mm-hmm. but more along the lines of the transfer itself. I would say some pretty good business from Celtic. I didn't think they would go out and get as much money as they have now this is looking at it from the point of view of where we've been pushed to go realistically this is a player I think we all would have wanted more for when we looked at the initial player that we had yeah. but uh, considering the circumstances to get a deal that could brandish £11 million for us is pretty decent. it's almost as if the five year deal has been or the four year extension yeah, has been, been foregone pretty, aye, it's true. Like this is now his original contract mm-hmm. that they've bought out um, which obviously isn't the case but his value will have depreciated the fact that he's um He's not playing for the Barely club. Uh, yeah, he's not playing for the club anymore. I was at the game at uh, Easter Road, and he, unfortunately, he, he stank out the place with his uh, with his performance. Mm-hmm. He did everything that was against a Celtic performance as possible. I'm not saying it's self sabotage because I don't want to put that on a player and I don't want to accuse a player of doing that. But if somebody was a conspiracy theorist watching him, that's what they would think because he was so off the boil. You know what? You know what's a bad I can bring you. You know the shortcomings in his game, but he couldn't even do the basics. You know he was passing, passing the ball to the opposition. He had to go, unfortunately, yeah. um, for for better or for worse. He's not. He's not. Um, you might as well get the money for him just now, even although as a as a lower fee than what you would have expected. I would have wanted personally about double that, upwards of twenty million, if he was playing first team. Well, that's what I would have wanted for him maybe this time a year ago. Yeah, but. I mean, there was no way on earth but you could you could ask for that now with 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 a club willing to meet it. I, I was I was looking at his individual stats season by season, and you know the stats that season aren't good. I think it's like a goal and an assist. That's it Aye. this season. But last season he played more games as a sub coming onto the park right. than an actual start. Remember that was, was a whole 40s, that was a whole thing, wasn't it? Like it was forty six total yeah. appearances, and twenty six of those were coming off the bench yep. because of Dyson Maeda. Um, Matt O'Reilly was similar. He he came off the bench quite a few times in games because of Adam Moy. But you know he's a player that I wanted Brendan Rodgers to really nurture and become a better player because the the raw attributes are there for him. He could have been so much more. Um, the injury was unfortunate when it happened. He came back. Um, he got the hero's welcome, and then he decided to play hardball with the, and then not and not play and not play at all. Um, or when he did come onto the pitch, he looked like he wanted to be anywhere else. But for Celtic, so I think for everybody concerned, it's the right, it's the right move. He, he's he's got to go. Pastures now. He's a young designated player for Charlotte FC. He'll be on good money over there, and yeah, all the best to him. Charlotte, North Carolina. One thing that's certainly going to happen is that him and Scott Arfield will do the salute. I guarantee you, right now. Does he do play it. for them? Yes, he does. Nah, I never knew that. Never knew he played for them. That also, that. I think that's where Riley McGree played for. Before he went to Middlesbrough, I mean, yeah. so that's the that's the last time I'd actually heard of Charlotte FC. It's Dean Smith that, that manages him, the former really? uh, Norwich really? investor. Aye. So he's actually going. 
he's actually going to play for Brendan Rodgers' pre- uh, successor. <laughs> successor, well. that's right. Um, I'm looking for they're an expansion up. club. Oh, they're not one of the original MLS yeah, clubs, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. an expansion one. And the, the prices for season tickets, I remember looking at a few months ago, were extortionate. Absolutely yeah. crazy amounts. But Which is nuts because their team is shit when you look for it. Ah, that's no, is it? That's Ashley West would play some. He does, I know. Aye, Ashley, there's a blast for the past. What did you just see now? 33. Is that it? Fucking hell. Dean Smith. Dean Smith. Boys back together, there you go. Charlotte FC under Dean Smith in pre season. Well, we'll watch with a keen eye to see what he does in the MLS. Well, Dean Smith. He does. He does look well. I mean, that's. There, listen, I, I mean, say what you like about America, but I'd imagine that the money in, you know. What's his name? Such Robbie Nielsen. You'd rather live in Charlotte, North Carolina, than Norwich and fucking Suffolk, wouldn't you? Is it Suffolk? Is that where Norwich is? Norfolk. <laughs> no clue. Is it Norfolk? Norfolk, it might be actually. Yep, that's that's. I've only, I've only got that because Alan Partridge, honestly. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, on that note as well, though, talking about transfers, Alexander Burnaby could be leaving the club in the coming days. Should his transfer materialise before the deadline in Brazil? Uh, reports are suggesting that a loan move is. Uh, almost done with Internacional. Um, is that real? I've not seen. Is that real? Yes, it is. Is he's, it? He's, he's, already, he's, he's moved. Oh, has he moved? Yeah, he's actually moved until the end of 2024. When did they announce that? Hours ago. Aye. Mm-hmm. Oh, Christ. I done a video earlier the day. I don't don't think that was a thing. Mm. What, what time was that? 3 21. I must have up. I must have. I finished my video at 3 o'clock today. So he must have moved like. Oh. Right, well, off mm-hmm. stream now. Let's uh, wow, let's I've been knocked off my perch. So, has, has it been confirmed? Yes, it's been confirmed. So, that is the actual and it, Yeah, and has, has it got a, an option to buy at the end of it? Apparently so. Yeah. Uh, Celtic didn't announce it. Um, well, that's probably by a that seems like kind know. of thing that would get slung up on the website, but no. Um, oh, well, maybe. Nope, the last thing that they, they reported on was the Celtic Legends match. So, um, so anyway, Kieran Burnaby's away. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty indifferent to it. The only thing you can maybe say is, oh, I, I, I initially, mm. my initial thought was, oh, if, if Taylor gets injured, I'm like, wait, if Taylor gets injured, I don't want to see Burnley start <laughs> the game anyway. I'd rather. I thought the same. So I I'm, the same. I, really, I'm, I'm indifferent to it because as much as you might say, oh, we're shorting that area, I mean, we're shorting that area, but we're a man doing when he's on the park anyway. I'd so. rather Brendan Rodgers shove John Kennedy in the park. Do a job. Yeah. Was a defender back in the day. He'll be leading the team. Aye, aye, true. aye, true. But he is gone. Um, here's, here's another thing. Yeah. Just going back to the Abada thing for a, for a second. They've not tweeted it out. They've not tweeted it. No, the, of course. No, they won't. They won't. They won't tweet it. There's no chance. I know. Tweet it. I know. And if they were to tweet it, see, the thing is, right? If they were to tweet it, they could obviously turn replies off, but then people will just quote retweet it. So they won't bother. It's just a PR disaster. Ah, it is. It is. It's just We've been hiding look. a lot of stories like this more and more now. You know, yeah. you think of the Mark Lawwell one that wasn't reported on. Just own it. Just own these stories regardless. Turn the comments off if you want, but at least use your social media platforms as social media to inform people. Yeah. I don't get it, personally. Well, I've done it for years, though. They pick and uh, choose. I know, I know, but I wish they didn't. Do you remember, like, when they'd done the... The Peter Lawwell address, like on his wee desk, and they like addressed the club during COVID, like mm-hmm. and, and they, like they didn't they post that on Twitter, didn't they? No. Oh no, I don't. Think that so. was just like I think that went up on the website. Go on the website and find it, and if you don't, then you know whatever. Um, but I hear two moves out of the club in March. Did you expect that? Uh, no, I really did not. <laughs> I take it in like the Americas, it's open to like the end of March, uh, then like the transfer window. Because this is pre season for I'm trying to think for the uh, career mode terms of when my dumb and Boca <laughs> Juniors ones and that. <laughs> but, but like, nah, yeah, I, I mean, you expected, I mean, if you told me at the start of the season, we'd be losing two players in March like, on transfers. I would have been a bit recent times. The Burnley one did come out the blue a wee bit, I will admit that, but we're at a point now where we're in the final run of games. The two of them only got to be playing anyway, so that's what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. I like the pressure that's now been put on the club. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest with you both. I like the pressure that they've got to go and get ahead of the recruitment. They've got to go and get. Christ, we've even choice. spoke about Mark Lawwell. I think it's something that we need to talk about. I think it's the most, it's the most important se- signing Celtic will have in the next couple of years is getting a competent, um, what do you call it, head of recruitment in the door. Because there's no point in talking about a goalkeeper 
or a replacement left back or a replacement right winger, if you've not got that head of recruitment, yeah. then who's who's signing the players? You know, mm. no, it can't be, it can't be the manager anymore in the modern game. It just cannot be the manager anymore. Out with, you know, extreme circumstances like it was with Ange Postecoglou. They were going for a complete rebuild, and they needed they needed players that Ange Postecoglou knew to fit into that system mm. quite seamlessly. Especially but, now when managers don't last fucking five minutes. You know, like it's a reality, isn't it? It's true. Unless you're going to have a manager like Alec Ferguson who you know is going to stay in the job for 25 years, then why should the manager be making signings? I, suppose? I, I, I like the manager having an input, of course, but the, the, the reason we have these roles at football clubs is so that we're signing players that are going to transcend coaches and transcend time periods. I mean, I know we're at a club at Celtic who sell players every fucking five minute anyway, but you know we need to forward plan. Um, and we need to make that appointment correctly because... The last three have been total fucking duds. But here's the question. Do you think that these guys are duds or do you think it's the board being stingy? The players being duds? No, the, 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 the heads of the, Nick Hammond, the Lee Conjure and, and Mark Lawwell. Do you think they would I have signed wonder, better players if the board actually backed them? I just wonder if they're, they're under these conditions that they can't sign the players that they're uh, maybe finding. Like maybe they've got... Because we heard that for the like for talking sake, I think it was Conjure and wanted to sign someone like Timothy Castagna, mm-hmm. who he didn't sign, Pitching just refused to spend the money well. on him. Yeah, and I think Mark Lawwell. There was obviously talk, talks of people like Lavakovic, for example, for months, never done it. So are we identifying these players for the board to turn around and go, nah? Because there was, have any of you you seen that brief that was leaked? And it was like a career mode yeah. type. See, it's like a short See, list. when you look uh, at that, right, mode. you think, oh, that can't be real, but do you not remember the leaks for, like, the summer 20, 2019? Mm-hmm. Like, the obviously, Joe Rebo and that was uh, all. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I look like I've made that on... Career mode. Like, no, but oh, I, could, I, look, I could have made that <laughs> on... Oh, what, that like, document. Aye, aye, and, like, uh-huh. There's nothing official looking about it, but uh-huh. it turned out, sure as fuck, that was the, uh, the transfer at targets, but... I mean, I, I've got no doubt in my mind that the board are putting very stringent financial like, restraints on the recruitment team, but I suppose they're obviously... You, you did raise a fair point, to be fair, because they they might themselves have higher ambitions that the clubs the club might not want to match, but I suppose if they have been given guidelines to follow and the players within those guidelines are the players we've yeah. got. So, because I've been very critical of Mark Lowell. Very critical of him. And the reality is, you can't get away with signing players like Lager Belker, who obviously weren't wanted. You can't get away with signing players like Tilio, who have come in, done nothing, and moved it. <laughs> he just a, went back to Melbourne. There's a complete mess in there, and it's got to, there's got to be a, 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 some response. You can't just blame the board for not backing them with money. Um, if anything, that could be a real damning indictment of the, if they could be trusted with money. So you've got to look at it both ways, really. Um, but we need to make the appointment right, uh, ultimately. It's got to be the right one. Yeah. Because it seems as if, uh, not to mention them too much, but Rangers have got a good appointment. They've got that Niels Colton that was the, the, the... He was in charge of PSV's recruitment. Yeah. PSV's recruitment over the past five, six years has been exemplary. Mm-hmm. So you know, Celtic have got to get somebody that's of a similar ilk, somebody that's not connected to the club, don't want a son, a daughter, an auntie, an uncle of any of the board members. A golf shop they've salesman. Got to be, yeah, they've got to be completely out with. It's not going to work if there's if there's too many connections. It was a it was a it was a failure from the get go with Mark Lowell because of his surname. Let's be honest, it was a hard yeah. sell. Um, he had to be perfect in order for it to work. And, and it was far fucking from. And it's far from perfect. So, um, yeah, he had a good CV. Obviously not cut out to, to get the identified players that were, you know, we heard about this City Group connection. How many City Group players did they sign apart from Marco Tellio? Um, I can't really think of any, you know. None. Sign a couple from Girona, I don't know. Um, although Girona are high flying at the moment. Aye, use, these con- <laughs> use these contacts to your advantage. But yeah. they, they just didn't seem to. And that was very, very uh, poor. I know this is pure stupid, but I've just been sitting kind of giggling in my head to think about it. I know it's a throwaway comment you said, but I, I don't want any aunties or uncles, uh, the board members and all that. They just some of the people on our board. I mean, they'll, they'll be dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel they'll be recommending Dixie Dean stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend um, <clears throat> James McGrory. 
He's a good player. I've seen this Portuguese boy. That's Eusebio. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him and I like him. Bacon um, Aye, Andres so... Oh, uh, what? God rest his soul. God, that'd be God. Again, Eusebio's I was about to say that they're all dead, Ryan. Believe it or not, Dixie Dean, isn't he? Cutting about... Uh, no, <sighs> really? Nah. Um, but aye, let's... Uh, how Can you see how long we've went, Kieran? Fifty-four, what? fifty-five minutes. Really? Or? Right. Quick thoughts on Livingston at the weekend, so I can get into the Q and A. Kieran, I'll start with you. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a massive game. You want to ideally see a, you would love a performance similar to Dundee, but as a cup game, you know what Livy are like. But so it's really important we get to Hamden. So needs to be a. We need to get to Hamden. We need to get Hamden. Get to Hamden in style. Sorry, I've just been given some breaking news, which has totally made my day. Yes. I need to buy CM Punk's then a sign in at WrestleMania, so I need to I need to get my I need to get a ticket. Sorry. Dweeb. What? Dweeb. Call me a dweeb. <laughs> that is my that is my hero. Right. Give me peace. Half naked men cuddling each other. <laughs> you like wrestling. <laughs> 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 right. Um hold on. Right. Aye, Ryan, your thoughts. On Livingston. Um yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's a good turnout from the Celtic fans. I'm hoping that Celtic can get to the next round comfortably and get a bit of momentum as well because there's no there's no momentum in this season whatsoever. It is a complete roller coaster. I called it that a couple of episodes ago. And it it's been nothing but that. It's been ups and downs the whole way. It's been a bit of a ghost train as well in terms of some of the frightening results that have went in the, against them as well. But yeah, just just get just get the win and get into the hat for the next round, get to Hamden, let's see. See where Brendan Rodgers can take us. Absolutely. Semi final, hopefully, first trip to Hamden this season. That's ultimately what you're wanting, isn't it? Um, that's what you live for. Missed Hamden this year. Well, can you I, imagine Martindale at Hamden? He's been at Hamden. He was in the League Cup fight. He was in the final. When was that? COVID. COVID. Was he low? Well, I mean, Livingston AI, would take about, AI, AI, Livingston would have took about 10 fans anyway, so it probably wouldn't have made a fucking difference. Fair. Like, no, it'd be disrespectful, but. <laughs> Come on. Do you think you're going to come to Livingston and line your pockets? You've got it all wrong. That's what he sounds like. That's generally, that's him. Why are you shaking your head at? He does sound like that. No comment. He does. He does okay. sound like that. Okay. There's no me slagging him. He does. I've never heard him before. <laughs> you never heard him on day. Right, Q&A sec- section. We'll start with Elliot. He said, what's your most disrespectful or controversial Celtic opinion? Can't even get a disrespectful one. I feel like that's got to be something heavy, but I'd like... I know. Well, Billy McNeil wasn't that good a player. <laughs> I mean, and, uh, that's the sort of thing you'd expect on like you know, a wild take on my day podcast that only exists for clicks. clicks aye. Aye. Like us. Aye, aye, aye. That's I feel just like on t- those TikTok ones, you know, those aye, TikToks, they are wild. It's like the mad guys like, why why does man support QPR? Oh, <laughs> I know. I hate that shit. Um what's your most Controversial. I, I feel kind of hanky stuff. Like this. I, I know. I, I, I don't. I'm like just a broken mind. <laughs> like, just anytime anybody asks me anything like that, that requires thought. I just sit there. And uh, the, the I remember that one. Gone. I remember that one time where Ryan said he didn't like the fucking the Celtic song. Celtic song, which was just baffling. Uh, that's nuts. Right. Future's now old, man. You know what I mean? Just get ready. Get Paradise oh. City on by or or Paradise by Coldplay. Huh. Or that welcome to pa- Paradise pa- by. Imagine Green walking Day. out to Paradise by Coldplay. That'd be awful. I, I say we get uh, Johnny Mac and the Faithful <laughs> on the pitch before every split. Do you know what? I'm going to ask you to go away and do your homework and think of that for the next show. Mm-hmm. Most controversial Celtic opinion. You've got time to think about it. Oh, uh, another one actually. I've got one more. You'll never walk alone has to be saved for big games. That's no controversial. That's, 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 that's a very popular that's opinion. That's a very popular opinion, yes. Mm. Me and Keon have been peddling this for fucking years. Everybody just sighs when it comes I know, it has. Because you think you've escaped uh, it when the teams have walked out and then it kicks in. You know, but it spurred us on to the 7-1. Yeah, well, it did. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe, that, maybe, that's, wrong. maybe that's what's required. Aye, uh, uh, <laughs> um, Are you guys getting... Decky says he's getting 2010-11 vibes from this season. Just... <laughs> Just with, I don't even really say the second part, but just without the parcel bombs. But wow, yeah. on that, no. <laughs> no, no. Thanks for listening. Uh, Twenty ten eleven vibes though. Uh, nah, because Rangers were in the. I don't know. It's a very different Rangers back then, wasn't it? Like tw- ten oh, eleven. It's close. Are you feeling, are you feeling that, that fire? A very different Rangers. Well, they were a very different Rangers. Yeah, yeah. They had Yelovich and now they've got fucking. Cereal desserts and whatever else. 
<laughs> Sorry. Can I point I you to the, the score just now. <laughs> Did they just score it by any no, chance? Totally <laughs> no. Um, nah, I don't know. No, I don't have that vibe. I think this is this is its own vibe. I don't like this vibe very much. This, se- this season's exhausting. I don't like this vibe. Um, then say, I anybody going to see it? No, no. <laughs> Sorry, Dickie. Doogie says you can only keep one, Hotati or O'Reilly. Hotati. I knew you'd go with Hotati straight away. Who do you keep here? I don't know if I've just so much consigned myself that we're losing O'Reilly that I'm kind of leaning towards Hotati, but O'Reilly is a player. But I feel like I miss Hotati so much. I just want him. I'd, I'd pick O'Reilly, personally. Just because he's played this season. I need, yeah. to, I need, I need the evidence back that Hotati is still that guy. He's could, always been that guy. But, but, but He's well, always well, been that well, guy. Well, 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 well. His team I, are struggling without him. But what if, I, but what, 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 if he's, what if he's struggling when he's back? Well, then I'm happy to be proven wrong because <laughs> I've got no evidence uh, to prove or deny that. So we've got you saying Hitati. Kieran, who was your final choice? Hitati? Well, yeah, I, just because just I miss him. I'll yeah. be in a stinking mood if he gets sold in the summer. Hitati. I think we deserve a full season of yeah. him being fit. I don't think we can sell him, man. Like, you need yeah. to try and get his value back up because yeah. I feel like he's one of the players where he's. He sort of dipped at the limelight and teams the won't be trying. He's 26. Mm. You know, he, but he's a young 26 because he's not got that much uh, mileage on him. Maybe if all. he gets another injury, we'll get him like Kyogo and he's too old for a move anywhere else. Yeah, like Carter Vickers as well. Mm. You know, I think he's kind of happy with his lot now. He, he, he realises he's a bit injury prone. He's like, right, I'm not going to get it really much better anywhere else. So I don't yeah. know. I still think Carter Vickers is somebody I, I'm not saying you're definite for leaving, but I don't know if I. I'm as certain as you. We'll see. We'll see. Adam says, because of my love for the kebab pie, have you ever had a shawarma king? And as is it nice? Uh, and then secondly, what's your thoughts on the new Champions League format? Um, shawarma king, is that the one down... Under like, the wee bridge yeah. mm. Not that great. Overrated. No, I've never Over, had it. Overrated. I've never been, but I'd imagine I'd love it. It was okay. It was fine. I would even say it was quite good, but it wasn't what people were building it up to be. It was a fucking kebab. Is that the one that was on fire a couple of years ago? I seem to remember that. Maybe. I don't know. There's one like, know. best kebab in Scotland. It's however many years It's fine. It's okay. It's like, it's no that grand. Better when you're pissed, probably. And I, listen, you, you, they've not got a sitting section. You need to walk and eat it. And I, I like to enjoy my food, personally. And I don't live in town, so I kind of get it and then like take it to a flat. So like, maybe that took away for the experience a bit, but just not. Nah. It wasn't in town, it was in Denison. It's kind of a wee bit. I mean, no, it was in Denison. Imagine if Shawarma King opened like, some form of thing. Did, did they apparently not open one down by the river? Wait, I swear there was one like Paisley Road West or something. Oh, like maybe. Or, I don't know, I, I might be thinking. Ryan is doing it, pull it up, Ryan, pull it up, pull it up. 2023, oh, it, was, it was on fire. It was on fire. Aye. Talking about pies, but Kieran, the chicken chasney pie at Marsville. Oh, what a treat, man. Oh, it was actually tidy. Oh, good. We had raw on the tap, right enough. But I know. I, I, looking at it, it didn't look that much, but inside, unreal. Yes. Maybe a wee bit more sauce. Or, I don't really remember it being saucy, to be fair. It was quite a weird, a wee bit. It's a four out of five on. Uh, it's like it's Liza. good, it's good. But, but there's it's only no one. There's only one negative review, and it comes from a, a Ryan F that says <laughs> there are no seats in this establishment. <laughs> I rest. cannot sit and eat my kebab <laughs> like a cultured swine. Uh, Champions League format. I'm like, quick answer. Thumbs up for me. Looking forward to it. That uh, I don't know about you, but that video. You see the, the Champions League video that they put out the UEFA pages. That got me proper buzzing for it. If you've played football manager, you know what it's all about. Yep. It's actually quite exciting. That's I'm, I'm, I'm more excited for the 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 term European football after Christmas to be <laughs> no longer a thing. Guaranteed so. after Christmas now, which is always ideal. Um <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Adam. Um I've already answered a doogie one. Is our next uh, uh, yes, I would. I enjoy, I enjoy these. Um, I, I only it, watched Ollie. only watched clips of it, but the uh, stick to football podcast with him. I've not watched very, it. Yet. Very good. Have I watched? Listen, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is a good manager. He was one of the ones that have also been hampered by the shit show that is Manchester United over the past decade. He uh, guided them to second place. He got playing good football, gave youngsters a chance. I liked him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't 
appoint him as Celtic manager, obviously not. But if there was an announcement saying Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the next Celtic manager, I'd be like, okay, I can get on board. That'd be my reaction. Yeah, he was quite gutted there that United never get Haaland because mm. he actually phoned them up and said, we got this guy, you know, he's going to be cheap, get yeah. him now, get him now. No, no, we've got reports. And then he said it again, go and sign him, go and sign him, 20 million, 20 million. Um, and he didn't sign him, so... Celtic one linked him at one point yeah. as well. Um, what could have been, eh? Would you take Ollie Keane? Okay, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> who, would, who would be your next manager? Like, I, I know that Brendan, Brendan Rogers. Rogers. I feel like at the point now where I don't really have any names in my head who I mm. want. Or is there even a point in having that conversation? Rogers isn't going to be going anywhere next season. I know. But Who's the leak? He's not going to go. I, I just is his position tenable if they lose the league? I, I I wouldn't say that it's necessarily the right decision to keep him in the job, but they're not going to get rid of him. I can virtually. I don't think he'll walk. I think he'll have a point to prove. I don't think his ego can take it. I mean, I said it the last time. I feel like there's a lot riding on this league title for him personally because his stock would be an all-time low if he came back and uh, didn't win it. And I think I mean, we spoke about in the future some English teams that took a punt, but I think he's going to get. The level of job again if he doesn't come up here. It's not even like there's a palace on there. Like you've seen Palace made a good appointment. Glasner. Yeah, I love a Glasner. So that speaks volumes, really. I nah, I listen, Rogers hasn't gone anywhere, I don't think, unless we like if if it's a close one, I think he's safe. If we royally fell behind, then maybe, just maybe they would they would let him go. But I don't know. It's too early to talk about that. Um, I've got a lot of questions. I've got, obviously got a quiz. Oh, Liam is asking you, Kieran, what's your go-to after shave? Um, basic one, but boss night. Oh, I've re- I've recently switched scent. Mm. I'm now a, 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 I really like that new. I can't remember the name yet now, but it's the Prada one with Jake Gyllenhaal and the advert. Mm. Really nice. I got a tester for it. My mum got me a one of the wee testers when she was on holiday, and I was like, I like that. So I got it for my Christmas. Really nice. What's yours? One million. One million. I knew so it was that. I knew it was one million. This one that I can only get an Ibiza for whatever reason that my mum and dad go every year. So I always time it that I've got that one coming. Um, it's Aye. only about twenty euros or something, but it's it's brilliant. Uh, that one people ask about that one a lot more than the other ones that I spend a lot of money for. So like, you know, After shave has always been a pointless thing for me in recent years because uh, usually it just becomes the scent of club. Mm. I just hate pain for after we were going to see we were going to see hate pain for flags because <laughs> I'm not club. <laughs> I I know after shaves deal man isn't it? for a fucking bottle of spray. Um, what do you think will be the best option to replace Joe Hart? I think Bazuno from Southampton, but don't see us spending fifteen million. <laughs> nah, <laughs> ain't gonna happen. I the goalkeeper. There's a lot of questions about that this week, Joe Hart. So that thank you to Bernardo Boy who asked that one specifically. I don't think we're in any position to be able to hand pick a keeper between the three of us. Oh god, no. There's nobody like Kelleher's no Hartman. Lavakovic is obviously long gone. Um Lunin's no happening. He's played last night. Aye. <laughs> He's played like nine games in the trot now. Yeah, so so yeah. Uh the goalkeeper we sign next is probably somebody unknown. We've probably us. never heard of him. Yeah, Aye, exactly. So that's the job of the scouting department, but they don't have a head of recruitment, so mm-hmm. they need to get that sorted first before they get a list of targets. Right, let's get firing through a couple quick. Food question, our favourites, biscuit themed today. So, Ryan. I'm, I'm out for this one. You don't like, what do you like? Right, let me see. Biscuits. Oh, I like digestives there. Digestives number one. Right, I don't fucking, I've not even read that. Nah, yeah, I don't have any other ones, so it's digestive biscuits. Christ. What happened to you when you were younger? <laughs> it dropped, clearly. You don't like cakes. Lactose intolerant. You don't like you don't like donuts. You don't Please. like cookies. Cookies are okay. You don't like biscuits. I like digestive biscuits. You like the most boring biscuit. Yeah, I, I'm a ready salted man as well. You're yeah. ready salted. What is wrong with you? I'm vanilla, but at the same time, I'm I don't like vanilla, so I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> you amaze me in so many different ways. It's unbelievable. I just do. You, do you love the taste of the? The, the bread to get mass. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do buy that. Oh, of course you do. Body of Christ, give me it. Thank you very much. What do you like? What was fun for you at a party when you were younger? Like, no, you see, when I was younger, right, and I remember this in nursery because I had the Pokemon cake uh, with Ash, Ketchum, and all that in it. 
Um, and the it, cake wasn't for, no, not actually. I was made it. Catch the When I was getting a cake for everybody, I was getting a cake for everybody else because I couldn't eat the cake. I was basically supplying food to other people because I couldn't actually have the birthday cake. That um, is miserable. It's, it is miserable, uh, but you, you don't really miss things you've never had before. Uh, so right, yeah. so Kieran, this goes to you then. Biscuit yeah. theme. I pick, love biscuit. Pick three, drop three. Digestives, custard creams, bourbon creams, jammy dodgers, chocolate fingers, and party rings. Well, I'm keeping custard creams and bourbon creams. Oh, and straight keeps, uh, wait, what was the last two? Chocolate fingers and party rings. I'll go chocolate fingers. I do like a chocolate I'm going to go to say it. Jammy dodgers uh, are shy. I know, you've always, that's always baffled me. They're, I love a jammy dodger. Dreadful. I know, I love it. A foxy's jam ring. They're so good. much better. They're good. So much better. I like a jammy dodger, but I know they can be dry. But sometimes I got a dry biscuit, you know. Sometimes I'll take a dry one. But I mean, I, I can't even mind what I, I, I banished. There. Part, was it party rings, digestives, and you got rid of party rings, and da- jammy, jammy dodgers. dodgers, and digestives. Uh-huh. I'm happy with that. I'd probably keep custards and bourbons as well. Actually, do you know what? I think I'm the same as you. I think I'd keep a chocolate. Do you know the only reason I, I pick a chocolate bourbon. finger? I had a chocolate finger for the first time um, two nights ago. In about five or six years, and I forgot how fucking good they are. Can I just say when we're on the topic of chocolate, see the fact there's like a chocolate orange version of everything now? Oh, so aye. it's honestly unreal. Aye, aye. aye. It's, it's really it's in there. the new. Yeah, yeah, it is in. It is in. Uh, do you have any interest in Lennon Miller? Anybody? Lennon Miller? He should be a person of interest for Celtic in the summer. Yeah. Signed him for Sunderland and FM. Career mode hero. He looked good against us. And he looked good against Rangers too. I reckon when you're look, you're getting to the point now where you're in the next few years going to start thinking about homegrown players and having Scottish players to register because I mean we've got a couple coming through the now, but the way South have been with the, the yeah, progression of youth players recently, you've not got too much hope. So you wonder if that is something they'll actually keep an eye on. Yeah. And that's that. We had a lot of questions about Abada replacements, Joe Hart replacements, etc. But we, we have a lot more time to cover that between now and the end of the season. Um, so thank you for your questions anyway. Tune in next week and get your questions in again. On that note, we'll move on to the final segment of the show and hopefully batter through it. It's time for the full-time quiz hosted this week by Ryan McGinley. So the full-time quiz, the, the blurb on this is a total switch-up from the previous full-time quizzes. This is going to be nothing more than a classic football general quiz focusing on European football. Oh, so, oh, so the categories wow. are Scotland, Premier League, Top 5 Euro Leagues, Champions League and the Euros. So I think I asked you, Kieran, last time if you wanted mm-hmm. to be player A or player B. So Ryan, do you want to be player A or player B? Um. Last week I wanted to go player A mm-hmm. and I didn't get to go player A but it worked out for me. So, this week I'm going to go player A. Player A, <laughs> right. Fine. Turn again. Okay. So, question number one. We all know Aberdeen slash Dundee United broke the old firm, there I said it, uh, stronghold of Scotland in the 80s mm. but who was the last Scottish club to win the top flight prior in 1965? Hibs. Come on, look. Oh, yeah. Was it no Oh, it would have been before that. Shit. Player B. Kieran, this is to go one nothing up. Gretna played their... Gretna played their SPF, SPL, if I can say that, home games at Fir Park and Almondvale, as many know. However, they also played a home replay in the Scottish Cup versus Morton at which current League One stadium? Oh, my God. I have no idea. Good. League One. Yep, League One. Did, did I need to know the name of the stadium? I say the team that plays them. It's and I don't know either, but mm, it's <laughs> the, the team's bracketed. What do you think, Ryan? Well, see what he says. Mm. Um, I don't know. Queen of the South. I get the name of Queen of the South Stadium, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that is that a, is that a no? Then? I would give him it. Okay, 1-0. No. It is Palmerston be, Park, I'd Queen I'd of the South in Dumfries. Uh, question number Don't two. Don't say I'm no good to you. Right, question two. Equalise for now. Player A. So it's player A. Who is the only recognised midfielder to appear in the all-time top 10 goal scorers in the English Premier League? Only recognised midfielder? Recognised midfielder to appear in the all-time top 10 goal scorers in the English Premier League. 
sure there's one name that comes to my mind straight away and I'm thinking surely it's got to be him but I, I, I'm trying not to rush in here I'm just thinking very quickly because my head is telling me it's got to be super Frankie it's got to be Frank I'm aye, correct in saying that you've equalised one each um, let's check and see if Benfica didn't equalise there as well <laughs> they didn't uh, player B before Newcastle who was the who were the last team outside the named big six to finish in the top four Leicester nope it is Everton what although it probably it probably no that's sh- wrong it is Leicester because Everton would have been 2006 or 2000. Uh, have you, is the word in the question right? Outside, yeah. Before Newcastle, who was the last team outside the named Big Six to finish in top four? Leicester were never in the Big Six. No, it's so okay. Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Maybe you think because they bottled top four the season under Rodgers, but they won. I'll give that to okay, you. I'll okay, give that so to you. You're up 2 1. Very generous. Right? Maybe he just forgot that Leicester actually won the league. Mm. Uh. Um, question three. Sorry, Kieran. Uh, player A outside of Juve Milan and Inter which surprise team have won the fourth highest amount of Scudetto titles this is fucking annoying do you know why I watched this on a TikTok not long ago and I can't mm. remember for the life of me um, it's why they won but it goes back to the very first season mm. and then it's like a chart and it goes up as teams win it is it oh I don't, so outside of Milan Juventus and Inter Juve Milan and Inter is it Bologna? No, but you're close. You've got the same colour scheme. Genoa. Mm. Genoa with nine. That should have took seven. Player B. Who remains the only Dutch team since 1982 to break the Eredivisie hold of Ajax, PSV and Feyenoord? I know this one. I know nah, this one. Uh, I mean, I've got it in front of me, but I do know this. I know this as well. I know because of... Uh, because of who? Yeah, yeah. 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 FC twenty. Correct. Oh. What's an answer? Steve McLaren. FC. 20. That's not the reason I knew. The reason I knew is because there's a boy on Twitter. Look, shout out to him. I'm not gonna lie. The only reason I got that is because I heard you say that. I knew you were talking. Did, about did that? Oh, I hate you. I was gonna go for that mad name. Oh. <laughs> no, I've just know. handed you the win, basically. Three one. Is that yes? Three one. Yes. You've got every question right so far. So I need to get well this in. right for any hope then. Question four. Out with the top five leagues, England, Germany, Spain, Italy and France. Mm-hmm. Who was the last one or not from these leagues and when? What, of the Champions League? The last one I'm guessing what? this is Champions League, yeah. Oh, it fucking better be. There's a penalty check going on there. It's been given. Oh, has it been given? Um, right, so last one of the Champions League outside the top five leagues. Mm-hmm. I don't want to have to sit and do my work in here because we could be here all fucking day. It will be um, Champions League, England, Germany, Spain, Italy, France. Right, so, see, I could sit here in my head all day and go backwards, but I don't know how long that would actually take me. So I'm trying to think of big year surprise winners. In the last decade, there's not been a big surprise winner. They've all been England, Spain, Germany, whatever. In the 2000s, there was... Oh... Porto. Correct. Yes. I was actually going to show it for the back. Do you remember what year? Yeah, the year after Seville, 2004. Correct. Do you know who it was against? It was against Monaco. Correct. Don't get extra points, but you get an extra points there. Uh, Player B. And it was held in Gelsenkirchen, wasn't it? I don't know, it doesn't say. (laughs) It was held in Gelsenkirchen. They're not getting an extra point. The home of (laughs) Jalka. One each. Uh, Player B. Fill the missing blank from the Lisbon Lions run. Blank. Nantes. Vojvodina 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 Dukla Prague and Inter so the first team oh f- this is blank Nont I need you to get this wrong I know Dukla because Prague and Inter I think I will get it wrong it's, I'm actually trying to remember it that's, it, the, it, heart, that's the only round I can't remember it's after like at, at Lennox Town when I was up there for the press Aye. conference it was like they've got them all in the, uh-huh. in the reception I think that's the only one I can't oh. think of writing the other teams after this Nont Vo- nah. uh, <laughs> Dukla Prague and Inter oh, It's going to annoy me when I have to pass but, um, Okay the way I keep is here all day just I don't know 
FC Zurich. That's so oh, it is. God, that's right. Right. This is my chance to get three out of five and, and put the pressure on Kiel yep. on it. Oh, Euro 2008 was played in which two countries? It, don't rush in, right? Don't rush in. Do, oh, because 2012 was Poland and Ukraine, wasn't it? So 2008. Oh, where was 2008? I feel like it was... Spain oh, with the winners. I know, I know. <laughs> and it, it's there because I had the boys. I had the boys. <laughs> the, the, you had the boys. I had the boys. I had the yellow and the red one and it was the big black circles. Where was it? I had the silver one. Did you? I the, I, that was like the later uh, rounds. That was like the semi-finals, I think. Was there any controversy with that ball? It wasn't like the Jubilani? No, I think that was I just perfectly, that. I think I think it was a perfectly like sound video, ball. Man. Where was that? I Euro 2008. Oh. Euro 2008 was played in which two countries? What? Am I getting confused? Was it Poland and Ukraine? Or was that 2012? Poland and Ukraine. Was it, it was in 2012, you're correct. Can, can I try and guess? Was it Austria, Czech Republic? Or? You would get half right. I, I was thinking Czech Republic as well. Aye. Austria, Switzerland. Player B. Oh, I'm B. Yep. Well done, Kim. Just to consolidate your win, your big win. France won Euro 2000. This is probably before your time. I'm yeah, just trying to vote, yeah. France won Euro 2000 versus Italy with the golden goal rule. Who scored that goal? Um, I generally don't know. I'll give you a wee hint. This isn't... A, although he's French, his name doesn't sound French. What was the question again? France won Euro 2000 versus Italy with the golden goal rule. Who scored that goal? Oh, fuck knows. <laughs> um, I know, I really have no recollection of that tournament. <laughs> I was not born yet, but um, I actually don't know. Uh, your clue as well. Like, I, would, I would have just went for something obvious as well, but I don't, I don't know. Pass. David Trezeguet. No. Here and you're the winner. Did you say that doesn't sound French? It doesn't sound... I thought it sounded... Trezeguet. Trezeguet. I, I, I don't think it sounds French at all. What do you think it sounds? Italian. Yeah. I think I would have said. I can maybe see where you're coming. Uh, Trezeguet. Know, Trezeguet. Trezeguet He's not a player that I think of instantly. Nah. I'm nah, turning nah. this game off. What, what was the <laughs> tiebreaker if we had one? Uh, the tiebreaker is... 68 European Cup goal... Uh, 68 European Cup finals plus one replay in 1974. 23 separate winners and plenty of goals. Kieran Ald is shaking his head knowing what the question is going to be. <laughs> Are you shaking your head? How many, goals been, is it how many goals has there been in Champions League finals? How many goals have been scored across all the European Cup UEFA Champions League finals? Does not include penalty kicks and the shootout. 203. 203. Uh, 272. You're the one. 182. Oh, I wasn't too far away. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you as always, Kieran. Another cracker. Even though I lost. I lost. I mean, I know like a contentious draw. We'll see what the comments say with the... The Palmerston the, Park. The Palmerston Park yeah. incident. Yeah. Right. Well, but Kieran's the quiz master, so he's going to decide. Right, we've ran a bit long today, so I'm just going to wrap things up. Kieran, thanks for joining. Pleasure being back. McGinley, thanks, thanks for joining. Always, mate. Cheers, appreciate it. Yep, and we'll see you hopefully in the next episode. Ta da.